Hello drone racers. Today I'm going to build the ultimate smoke stopper. What's a smoke stopper for? If you haven't seen anybody else's videos about them, it is a device that you put between the battery. So you've got a battery and the drone that you are going to connect. So when you're going to first connect it, instead of just connecting the battery, you put this in the middle. And if there's a short, it will keep you from frying your electronics, at least do a good job of preventing it. But I'm not just gonna build any old smoke stopper. I'm gonna build the ultimate smoke stopper. What makes this one different? First, I'm gonna use a bulb adapter. So the bulb won't just be soldered to, it will actually be in a port here. So if something happens to the bulb, you can replace it without having to change everything out. Second, I'm gonna be using a switch. So this switch will make it much easier for me to bind my quadcopters because a lot of times I need to connect everything and then you know you have to push down some one button and you've got to plug something in and trying to plug in batteries with one hand is a pain in the butt. Well, this will let me hold down that button, flip a switch, and then it will power on and everything will just work for me. So that should make it much more convenient to set everything up. The last thing I've got is this switch actually has an LED on it. So when you do plug it in with the switch, I'll be able to know if things are on or not. So when I plug in the battery first, the LED will either light up or not, letting me know if there's power applied to it when I connect the other side so I can be more prepared for that. So let's get started. We're gonna start with the battery connector on this side. I've got my battery here and this will connect into this port. So this is the basically beginning of the circuit with these bulbs these bulbs are made for car headlights and they have high and low outputs on them because of that there's actually three wires here and in order to make this work we want to combine the two red and blue wires on this port I should say there are links down below if you want to build one of these yourselves but there's additional options that i'm going to list at the end of the video so stay tuned for that it should be obvious but you also are going to need a soldering iron for this i recommend a good soldering iron and some solder in order to make this all work so you do have to do some soldering here and then we also have heat shrink that will be used to make everything clean and safe. One more last thing, the mat that I'm using here, this is a different mat than I've usually got. This is a silicone mat that is heat proof. So that way when I've got my soldering iron, which is hot here, it won't burn into the mat where my regular mat, this would just burn right through it. it. Makes it really nice for not ruining your table surface. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually apply my heat shrink on these tubes. And this has to fit over both of them in this case and i'm going to keep these wires long and slide this down all the way to the end all the way as far as i can because i don't want this to shrink at all then i've got these two wires here and i'm actually going to expose a little more wire on them to make it easier to work with if you are doing this please use cable strippers like this and do not just use a knife you're going to lose pairs and you're going to end up hurting yourself eventually so then I'll twist these two wires together, making that a little easier. Now I've got the soldering iron here, which is pretty dirty. I'll get some new clean solder on there. Apply some solder to here. I am going to use my really terrible handy arms that I've got here. This is one thing I need to invest in a better set of. But for now, I just need it to hold this wire in place for me. So I'll get some solder on the iron. Get that so it heats up. And get some solder in the wire and make those one solid connection. It's actually too much. I don't need that much. For the connector, the I'm going to go ahead and pre-solder actually all of my connections here. So the way I do this, is I take a pair of pliers and a rubber band and I put this on my connector on my uh, pliers here. So then I can put my connector in here. And the other thing I do is, if you haven't seen any of my videos where I do this before, I always connect these together so that way if these heat up and move a little bit, everything holds its shape. I don't lose any shape out of this. So then I can put my connector in here and just feed a bunch of solder into it. One. Now you don't have to fill this completely, but you will do want a good amount of solder in the cup and four i'm going to do the positive side first that's where these two connectors go and they go on to the positive port where mine is listed mine does have a plus on it yours may not but it's the flat side of the xt60 connector 
So now I can take those out and just heat these up, get everything all melted, and slide those wires in. There we go, now we have a good connection. Now I'm gonna let this cool before I move this heat shrink because if I move it up there right now, it will shrink before I'm able to cover that surface over and then I will have to redo it because it won't be usable anymore. Okay, there we go, slide that over. It gets a little tight here, but then it will let me slide it over and then all the way, in my case, put it into the hole as far as I can get it. Lots of ways you can heat, heat shrink. Some people use the broad part of their soldering iron. Some people use a lighter. I am a fan of a heat gun. So I'm actually gonna use a heat gun that I stole from my wife's scrapbooking kit to use sh heat shrink my wire. Make sure when you do that, you don't blow it toward your other pile of heat shrink because you could end up shrinking and ruining that entire pile. So there's the first connector. That gets my positive power to my bulb. So the po power flows from here to the bulb and then out this negative here, which goes on the positive terminal of my switch. On my switch, there are three pins and there's two silver and one gold. The two silver are the power, so I go power in, power out, and then the gold is for ground, which we'll get to in just a little bit. I'm gonna use my pliers again to hold this in place. In this case, I'm just gonna have it hold this edge just a little bit. I don't wanna crush this, but I wanna hold it in place. So I've got the soldering iron, I'm gonna tin all of these edges as well. So we've got that one, the middle one, and then I will uh, do this side on the negative. So now my negative here, which is technically still positive, even though it's a black wire is going out and it's positive from here. Oh, I have not tinned this wire. I need to do that. It's positive from here all the way to the drone and then it's not the negative. So I am going to use my red heat shrink to help clarify that as I go. Now here's where the advantage of this uh, soldering mat is. I can just solder right there on it and no worse for wear. So then slide a heat shrink on here and this goes to the outside silver connector. There we go. It's got a good connection across the whole thing. Heat shrink is a nice long way away. That is hot. But here now, because I've only got one wire, I'm not nearly as stringent on my uh, heat. And if it shrinks a little bit, it'll be okay. And I've got plenty of time to move that over. And I shrink every one as soon as I'm done with it before I get anything connected, just in case anything slips. Things can end up sliding on you and by the time you get them heated, they're all in the wrong spot and you've got to redo them. So I just do them the slow way, one at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna take another piece of red wire here and this one needs to get ready. And you do not need good wire. I actually kind of hate using this good wire for it because you're not going to be putting any real amperage through this. Cheap extra wire that you've got laying around is just fine for this. This one's going to be a little bit harder to see, but I'm going to take this one and solder it to the middle connector in here. Now that one I didn't have to put any heat shrink on because I just have an open wire on this case for the moment. But I'll go ahead and put one on now. Now the other side of that wire goes to the positive terminal on the other side of this connector. So this is the one that will go to the drone. So now the power will go in the battery, through the bulb, through the switch, to the connector on the drone. Now this time I do need to put heat shrink on it before I solder it. So there's one whole half of the connection. 
Now we just have to do the other half. I now have three connectors left to go. I have to connect the ground here to the ground here, and I'm not going to just do that as a short wire because these are supposed to be apart, but they have to also connect to the ground here to provide ground for the LED in here. So I need two wires in order to do that. Strip the wires here. I do wish this one was a little bit longer, but I really, I have it and I don't want to waste wire. This one's in place and get the other one, other side. Okay, so these two are now gonna get twisted together and get some solder on them. I'm gonna get a little solder on here just to hold them together to start with. From there, we'll just kinda get them all loaded up. There we go. Now these two will solder onto the extra pin here. We'll move things around in order to do that. Okay, now we'll just solder these on here. Get that melted, get those melted. Get it all stuck to one nice little pile. I'm a little worried this black wire is really big that my heat shrink might not fit over there. So the heat shrink I used on everything else did not fit, so I had to actually go to a bigger size, but not a big deal. So one of the wires, doesn't really matter which one, needs to go to the ground on each side here. So again, remember the heat shrink, and in my case, it's gonna be a little harder because I've got just a teeny tiny wire here since I'm using scraps from other projects. But I will try and heat this really fast. Slide that in there so it doesn't heat the wire all that much. That works well enough. And we're done. Now we'll get these disconnected since everything is all set there. So now what we've got is we have our battery have our power connector here. Power connects here, we'll check, double check the connections. The Both the power goes into both the bottom connections on the socket here. It'll go through the bulb and then out the ground, but in this case it's just the output, so then it goes in the input on the switch, through the switch, through the output, and then to the positive, so we've got positive all the way through, to the battery connector, which will plug into the drone. Then the negative side goes from the negative here to the switch, it's sharing and providing negative and ground for the LED, and then also going back to the negative on the other side. So it should work. Now let's try it. In order to try it, you do need to put in a bulb, and if it doesn't go in the first time, these are keyed, so you just take it out, twist it around 180 degrees, and then pop that in. Use a 12 volt, a 3S battery for testing this, because these are 12 volt bulbs, so have a three uh, three cell around most of the drones that you're going to be testing this with will support a 3s so use that to test it and we'll get it connected and here's where it's nice is i can see this is why i have the led i can tell it's like oh well it's on i don't want to connect it while it's on because that would defeat the purpose so i'll turn it off now i know it's off and ready to go plug that in and now i can turn it on and my drone will turn on and I have no light on my bulb, meaning I'm not pulling enough amperage to actually light this bulb up, which is what I want. If that happens, what I will do the very first time I'm connecting this, I'll have this off, I'll turn it on, the bulb lights on and turn it off, just as fast as you possibly can. And hopefully that's fast enough to prevent magic smoke. It's, it's about the best I can do. There are other bulbs that will use lower wattages limits, so they will turn on even at this first switch and prevent additional power from going through there. But this, I think in the most cases, will uh, keep it from getting too bad. The, the amount of amps that this will allow to go through it are pretty low. So then if I get it turned on, you can see what happens. Just to prove it, I've got the uh, radio for this turned on, and if I arm it, I start the motors going. And okay, they've got uh, power there, and then, oh, they uh, the bulb's coming on, that's bad. And it actually will not allow me to provide power through there. As soon as I start to have a draw on this, this pretty much kills the amount of power that will go through to there. So I try and go through, nope. 
Oh, and then there it just reset the whole board. So in the case where you do get it connected and have the power applied, you just want to turn off that power or switch as fast as possible. And that's the other reason I like to switch. I can do that a lot faster than I can unplug that connector. So here's my question for you. I am thinking about making this a Patreon reward because I think a lot of people don't want to make one of these, but want one. And I'm looking for a good item to give out for patrons. A lot of people use Velcro straps, and honestly, I think those are really lame. Do you want a Velcro strap with my name on it? I mean, really? To me, this is something that is very useful and everybody would use. I'm gonna create a pull up in the corner. It would probably be a $10 reward that would be given out once we hit a certain goal level. So say at the $10 level, once we hit $500, everybody at the $10 level will get one, then anybody that signs up after that at the $10 level will, will get one after they've, uh, they've been a member. It's just a thought that I had, something to be able to help build the community because I think we've got a really good community there just with a couple of guys now and show my way of, of saying thanks for, with something that I think would be really useful. But if you wanna build one yourself, I've got the links for everything down here below. A lot of it comes off of Amazon, so it won't work for everybody internationally, but you can find most of it. One thing with the Patreon, I probably won't ship it with a bulb just because I don't wanna ship bulbs and have them break, but it makes it really easy that all you have to do is go to your local hardware store, get one and pop it in. So if you found this useful, leave a like down below, comment with any changes and upgrades that you would make to make it an ultimer, ultimate, ultimiter, smoke stopper. And until next time, remember, smoking is bad for you and your drone.